All right, so I'm here with Connie, and uh, you invited me down to your place. You guys do monitored archery here, yes. which is super cool. And uh, But you're having a little bit of trouble with a couple of the horses. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I have um, a Rocky Mountain, okay, and I got him. He, for years, was with the Pasifino trainer, and he was taught to always be on contact okay. and push, push, push. Of course, we ride without any contact. So he would literally fall down, like when I trail ride or whatever, because I was trying to teach him to carry himself. I went too fast with him in the mounted archery. Okay. We started out and he allowed me to shoot off of him and I picked up, went to a couple competitions. Started going faster. He kept increasing speed and then he learned to fly. Okay. Oh, okay. And so it was like, you know, I should stop him and I didn't. And I let him fly. And so now he thinks he's supposed to fly every time we get on the course. So when we get to the beginning of the course, he's all amped up. Okay. Like, like kind of like a barrel horse or yeah. something. He hasn't been ridden in months. I need help. Let me just ride him around a little bit and get the feel. Yeah, right. So do you see how if I reach for a rein, it, it amps him up? Do you see how, like, when I wasn't touching anything, he stayed slow? But when I put pressure on a rein, everything got faster. So we have to fix that first because you don't have any, I need to have tools. Okay. When you're on the track, that's another puzzle, that's a separate issue. You need to be able to reach for a rein and use your leg and have a correct response without it putting anxiety into them. Otherwise I can't use it there. Okay. So it's like there's, I don't have, I wouldn't have any resources. Because if my rein makes him go faster, does that make sense? Yes, yeah. that's what it feels like too. Yeah. So if you already own a horse, you know, or you've learned by now that horses can be challenging and frustrating and that it's more of a journey than a destination. And if you would like to have me as your coach on that journey to keep you from getting plateaued, to help keep you progressing, to help you to understand what the right order is to do things, I would encourage you to join my Patreon page. It's fairly inexpensive and I think you're going to get a lot out of it. Go ahead and check out the link below. Let's get back to the video. So one of the secrets is when I hold here, I'm gonna wait till his feet get slower and sticky right there, and then I'll let it go. Okay. So I, if I would've just, if you, if you weren't really using psychology or feel and timing, you would say, oh, he did the yield, stop. No, it's still fast. And the reason I'm doing the yield is to slow him down. And so I need him to slow down in order, and the, he needs to understand that when he slows down, that's where the relief is. Okay. And right now he's thinking faster. <laughs> He gets amped up and there's no real way to, right. you can control him, but he's not decompressing. He's staying revved up. And so I'm just gonna use this, I call this relaxed rein. I'm just asking him to get soft on this rein and walk a small circle around my inside leg. And there he got slower, now I'll release him out of it. So I'll just practice revving him up and then bring him back. Okay. Rev him up, bring him back. Can you hear that? And blowing out. That's what should happen when you use the recovery strategies. So I'm letting him get pretty committed to speeding up before I fix it. Okay. If you bring pressure on too early, the, the problem is half the credit for the pressure goes to whatever they were doing that was right the other half of the credit for the pressure goes to what they did wrong. So you break even, you don't get anywhere. So I, I call it signing them up. I let them, that's why I told Cheryl five steps. Let her, let her commit to the wrong thing. Now, not if it's dangerous, like bucking or something, but if you're training them, um, as a general rule, sign them up. Let them get committed to the wrong idea so that when you add pressure to say that's a bad idea, uh, whether it's picking up a rein or putting your leg on or whatever it is, um, all the credit for that pressure goes to doing the wrong thing and none of it goes to halfway doing the right thing. Okay. Mo human nature is to like do more first, <laughs> fix things quicker and, and not let them make a mistake or that we're doing the wrong thing and that's the, the wrong approach to it. <laughs> oh, we stalled out. Yeah, where do you put a quarter? There's another one. Also notice how slow. Yeah. So like when I bend him down there, the feel was very strong, but it was slow. I don't bring pressure on quick. I'm sure I put way more pressure on Cheryl's horse than Cheryl did, but I, your, her horse appreciated the way I did it because I did it slowly. 
speed kills. <laughs> Horses don't like pressure coming on quick and that will rev them up more. Okay. So you really wanna bring pressure on slowly. It can be firm, but slow. Okay, I'm gonna head down. So he blew out there, it's really good. So I didn't, I love that I didn't feel anything change. Didn't bother him being here, which is really good. Now I'm gonna add a little speed. So I reached down and I turned 180 degrees. And now I'll let him get relief. So what I'm gonna do with him is I'm gonna keep the puzzle really simple. And it's just another approach. I don't know, I've not done it enough. These are the only archery horses I've ever worked with. So you can experiment, but this is another approach. Okay. Um, basically every time they get speedy, I'm gonna let him commit and then we're gonna redirect and go 180 degrees the other way and let him walk. So they're gonna run into pressure for speeding up. Now I'll softly turn, cause he was being good. Let him commit. Now the premise is, when he doesn't charge off, we'll continue straight and then I'll let him get relief down there. The premise that I work from is that horses want to do what we want them to do if, they, if we can get them to feel comfortable doing it. But if a lot of times our idea is to make them uncomfortable, go in this horse trailer, go over this noisy bridge, ride through the dark coal, you know, like, you know, this kind of things, you know, run fast while we shoot a bow off you, you know. And uh, so, so these things are unnatural to them. And so it's just about communicating our idea. So I'm always looking for ways, strategies to find a way that makes sense to them. But it's all about showing them what we want is where the relief is. What we don't want is where the pressure is. But that goes against human nature. Human nature is control the horse, make them listen to what you want, do what I say. And that's the like, the, the just more natural instincts of the human. This is why horses is hard for us and while they're also why they're beneficial to us because it challenges us to think more laterally, think differently than we normally would. So, so right now my negotiation with him is, I can feel when he switches to a canter and that's when I'm shutting it down. So I'm, I'm trying to pick something that might be obvious to him, that he would be clear. Okay, when I do that, pressure comes on, it doesn't equal relief. He's not been bad this way at all. So with him, this is very much connected to going that direction. So what I would do is just walk him a little ways this way and then go ahead and start up your run again this way. <laughs> what a good guy. And then you can just play with this. So it's just loose rein, loose rein. <sighs> Breathe out, see him come right back to me. Didn't touch the reins, that's, that's what we're looking for. Let's make sure we weren't lucky. I might get in the business of training mounted archery horses. That's kind of fun. So the other thing is we're looking for 1% improvement. He got the idea, he couldn't have tried harder. He slowed down on his own and waited on me. Um, that's an A plus for him. So when you're thinking about training, it's not about fixing this and then, okay, competition today, tomorrow or something. Like, that's the wrong idea. We do, we, we get on a program. You do the program for five to seven sessions. That's how you make a change. That's called deliberate practice. And that's really the difference between uh, amateur and a professional. If you send your horse to me as a professional, you would expect, even though I had results, you would expect me to put him away on a good note and reinforce it more tomorrow. Reinforce it, you know, until it's solid all the way through. We could keep pushing him, but that wouldn't make any sense. Like we got progress there, and you, what happens is they learn that when they put effort into our idea, the game's over. They're done. Just let them let them get relief. Stand here in the track, and this changes the pattern of what they're used to a little bit too. So.
He's a good boy. Just, he just, we just had to show him what we wanted. He's like, okay, I got it. He was a very cooperative horse. Awesome. So tell me, what's your, what is your main takeaway while you're still mic'd up here? My main takeaway from this is I need to teach him that reins don't mean speed up. Actually, I would like him to relax. Yeah. So I'm going to do the exercise you gave with doing the small circle with rain contact light and then give and take. When he softens and slows down, I just release. Yeah. And so he'll learn the releasing of that. Then I learned that when I come on the track and if he changes gait, what I've asked him to do, then I just one rein, reverse, and walk in the opposite direction. Perfect. Yeah. I think the combination of those two strategies will work for a lot of horses. I think um, the first strategy was what we used for her was a little more fundamental. I would That's where I would start a young horse that's never done this before. Okay. I would get them to be balanced going, going both ways and teach them there's more pressure on the ends than in the middle. Okay. That's a classic uh, send through exercise. Okay. Whatever you send a horse through something, they're going to feel pressure in that middle squeeze area okay. and then they feel the relief on the end. So the idea is we put pressure on the ends and relief is in the middle. Okay. So that's a pattern that every horse should learn foundationally. The la I would use the one I just used with him as more of the last resort. Okay. I would want him to get a little more balanced doing those other things first. Okay. Yep. Sounds great. Thank you. Awesome. So yeah. Much. Great to work with you guys. Okay. That was a fun first time working with some mounted archers. Yeah.